Namaste everybody, Lisa A. Romano, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and today I want to talk about why we fear. What is it about fear that keeps us paralyzed and running in circles and unable to live from the authentic self? As a very analytical thinker, I do what I can to understand the mechanisms of my mind. I believe in self-awareness. I believe in metacognition. I believe in the ability to observe the inner workings of the mind. And I absolutely know that being able to observe the inner workings of the mind helps us recover from trauma, from codependency, from narcissistic abuse, from psychological abuse and so on. And the interesting thing about fear, I believe that it comes down to this idea that we have more faith in the outer than we do in the inner, meaning we are 3D beings, we live in a 3D material-based world of form, and our mind is looking for facts to hold on to, concrete things like numbers to prove that we're enough or the smile from a stranger to prove that they see us validation from the outside to guarantee that we're real it is as if the ego is tied or tethered to the 3d experience and without the external validation without someone looking at us without someone patting us on the back without someone to argue with. We may not feel real. We are born to connect. But if we do not learn to go within and free our minds from the obsession to connect with other people, then we will disconnect from the self. And as we disconnect from the self, we become more neurotic about connecting with other people. And we develop codependency, we become reactive, we walk around like infected big red toes, we're afraid of people bumping into us, we're afraid of not being seen. And so we can feel slighted, and if we feel slighted, we can become annoyed and be reactive. And so going within is really the key to freeing the mind. But here's the rub. When you come from a dysfunctional home, when you have been shamed, when you have never felt loved, you don't feel like you are enough. So when you go within, what do you find? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. You don't want to go within. There's too much crap. There's too much, I'm not enough. I'm ugly. I'm stupid. Nobody loves me. I'm boring. I'm not pretty, I'm not intelligent, I don't make enough money. All of this stuff is in, on the inside. So going within becomes a difficult, difficult thing to do. And so attaching to the outside is somewhat of an escape. When we attach to the outside, when we have problems going on on the outside, when we have addictions to deal with, when we have arguments to deal with, when we have details to deal with. We don't have to go on the inside. And so fear is linked to a inability to go within. We don't know how to go within. We don't know how to access our God self. We don't know how to ultimately fall into the beautiful and divine lap of the only truth that matters. And the one truth that sets you free is learning to believe that you are enough, finding your God self, detaching from the outer world, learning to trust this inner guidance. And so fear is the result of not knowing how to go within, and when we go within, finding things that we don't like, right? So we believe more in the outer than we do the inner. We believe that someone else can make us happy. We believe that enough money can make us happy. We believe that the right relationship 
can make us happy. We believe that the right person, the right person to validate us, the right house, the right job, the right car, the right word from a stranger, it's all of these attachments to the outside. And yet what frees us is the absolute ability and the absolute divine right that we have to find the ultimate truth which is you are creator incarnate. You are like a volcano, or you are like a beautiful waterfall, or you are like a beautiful sunrise or a sunset, or a daffodil, or a peacock, or a dolphin, or a star in the sky. You are a beautiful and divine creation. That is really what you are. We have been brainwashed to believe in the outside. We have been brainwashed through advertising, advertising, through the media, through music of different sorts. You know, the frequencies of music matters. Um, I remember studying about subliminal brainwashing and advertising and how advertisers knew that in order to be um, profitable, they had to get people hooked. They had to get them hooked on nicotine. They have to get you hooked to an idea. If people want you to spend money on alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, a car or a pocketbook, they have to hook you. And what they're hooking is your focus, your attention, and your belief systems. And this hook pulls you and your ability, your decision making aspect of you to the outside world and when you get caught up in believing you need this thing or you need that thing then you are controllable and so you can free your mind when you learn to understand what is keeping you from freeing your mind which is illusions which is materialism superficiality and the fear of going within because we find shame. And below all of this stuff is your true God self, the divine you, the I am that I am, that is just waiting for you to let go and detach and find time to commune with the I am. What I'd like to suggest people do is every morning go into meditation, light a candle, before you do anything else, have a glass of water, calm your mind, light a candle, put on some beautiful meditation music, and go into a meditative state, fall into the I am that I am. Do not bring your worries into meditation, because once you know that you are enough, and you operate your life from I'm enough, I have enough, Everything's working out for me. Right here in this moment, I have all that I need. Right here in this moment, I have all that I need. Don't bring any of your worries into the meditative state. Leave all of that behind you. Let go and detach. Find things to be grateful for. Put your hand on your heart. Your heart beats for you. It doesn't beat for me. It doesn't beat for anybody else on this planet. It beats for you. Put your hands on your liver. Your liver is filtering toxins out of your body for you to keep you alive. Put your hands on your kidneys. Your kidneys function for you, for your benefit. Put your hand on your eyes. Your eyes function for you so that you can lay your eyes upon beautiful things and see beauty in yourself. Put your hands on your ears. Your ears operate for you. But what you want to do is to make sure that what you allow access into the subconscious mind and the conscious mind by way of the sound frequencies that enter through your ears, you want to be very careful about what you're letting into your sacred and divine space. So freeing your mind means freeing yourself from these external ideas, these codependent ideas. It means we're willing to tell ourselves another story. Maybe you were a victim of abuse, but when we take time to go into a meditative state, 
and we leave that story by the back door, right? Don't bring it into the meditative state. Leave it on the back door or the back porch. Maybe something is going on in your outer world today that needs to be worked out. But I can tell you that pulling at it only makes the knot stronger. It's like jewelry. You ever try to undo a knot in a chain, a piece of jewelry, a necklace, and you're pulling on it, you make it harder to unwind it. It's when you ease up on it, right? And you try to wiggle it and you're just non-resistant to the knot. And, you know, it's so much easier to undo the knot in a state of non-resistance. Maybe you do have, you are experiencing a health crisis, but leave that story on the back door, on the back porch, when you go into a meditative state. So freeing your mind begins by finding the time to find silence, to go into the silence. And as negative thoughts show up, don't attach them. Don't attach to them. Let them float away and go deeper into the I am that I am. Find the space to observe what's happening. Find the space to observe the thoughts and observe the stories. Acknowledge them. They happened. They're true. Acknowledge the pain. They're true. But there's more to you than the experience of pain. There's the true I am that I am that is waiting for you to discover the silence and the peace and the calm and the equanimity that can be yours through meditation and through silencing the mind, through letting go of old storylines, to finding the time to connect and commune with the real you. This is the way we release fear. The more we are able to go within, the less we fear going within. The more we want to go within, the more we want to commune with the divine self, the less reactive we are to other people. We learn to let things go. We're not so affected when people call us names or roll their eyes or don't show up for us. It's okay because we've become our own best friend. We get it. The truth is we are enough. We have always been enough and we always will be enough. So fear is Fear is the result of being afraid to go within and not trusting that we are enough. Fear is tied to thinking that we need other people to validate us. We need things to happen in a certain particular way for us to be happy. And that's just not true. That's just not true. We can learn to be happy for something right here, right now, even if it's just for the time to listen to these words, even if it's just for fingernails or toes, or the ability to hear, or the ability to see. Your heart is beating. It's a fabulous thing. Your liver is functioning. Even if it's having a little bit of trouble right now, you are here. Remember, dear ones, life is a vacation. It doesn't last forever. And so I pray that this podcast has inspired you to go within and to be a little less afraid of what you find. Because I can promise you that what you find will change your life for the rest of your life. Namaste. Bye for now.